How's it going, Paul? Graham Matthews, BleachReport.com. Uh, just talking about from before the NXT involvement in this pay-per-view, seeing all the stars that, you know, were Gunther, Rhea Ripley, winning the match here tonight. Just talk about seeing their progression over the last couple of years, starting out in the Rumble as NXT surprise entrance, Rhea winning the whole thing tonight, Roxanne Perez being there as the NXT Women's Champion, and what that means for you, being a part of the whole journey for them. It's So watching NXT talent come up through the system and then, you know, get to Raw, get to SmackDown, have moments like you saw tonight or, or whatever that is, and watching their career evolve, it, it's it's really something special to see. You know, you have a tendency after people have been here for a period of time to forget sort of where they came from and how you watch them develop and come through. You know, like, um, there's so many talent that are so good that just came out of that system. And sometimes when I see them, it's hard for me not to look past, you know, the first times that I met them um, or the first times that they had that sort of magic moment where the light bulb went off for everybody on them being a big star and see that, you know, I see pictures a lot of Bianca Belair and I in a hallway, um, but I believe it was the Mae Young Classic and I think it was like one of her first live matches and getting an opportunity to do that May Young Classic. And just, you know, she came back and the reason I went to it is because she came back and got in the hallway and broke down. You know, it was so emotional for her. Um, and, you know, it, it was emotional for me watching her have that moment and picking her up and saying like, hey, stand up and be proud of what you just did. Cause you, like, this thing gonna be the first time you have a moment like this, you're, you're you're gonna be a big star. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to see her now, um, you know, headlining WrestleMania, to see her with that women's championship, to see the level of pro that she has become, to see her out there doing media, to see her on talk shows, to see just that level. And, and there's so many people that you can name it. So, you know, that, that have done that same thing. So, so sitting here tonight and, and watching Rhea Ripley as this this kid that came here scared to death from Australia <clears throat> and you know the process of her going to the UK and coming back and you know the ups and the downs and everything to see her get to this moment tonight it's amazing to watch and it's um, honestly one of the coolest parts of what I have the privilege of doing you know is working with all these amazing athletes and sort of trying to do your part to help them get to that next level and give them that platform to do it. And um, it's it's unbelievably rewarding. And I'm, I'm incredibly proud of every single one. We've got uh, two more questions. <coughs> Thank you for doing this, appreciate it. Ryan Satin, Fox Sports. Yes. This is the first road to WrestleMania where you're behind the driver's wheel creatively. Does that make you feel a sense of pressure or does it excite you? Oh no, it's pressure. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's exciting. Um, the, the pressure is what makes it exciting. I think for um, anybody that's performed in this to a certain level, like if, if you don't love that pressure, if you don't live for that pressure, if you don't want that, um, then you're gonna struggle in this. And um, what's cool is to be able to go from the athletic side of it, the performer side of it, to the behind the scenes aspect of it. And, you know, to have done it at a level that at the time seemed mind-blowingly big, whereas we were creating NXT and doing all that stuff, um, you know, that felt like a lot of pressure. And then you come here and it, it's, um, it's amazing. You know, but luckily for me, what makes it doable is the team that's around us. You know, um, no one is doing this alone. It's certainly not me. It's I'm just a part of a big wheel that makes all this thing happen. It doesn't have, you know, you look at this stadium here tonight and what it looked like and the spectacle that was put out here. Kevin Dunn, um, his team. Jason Robinson building these amazing sets. And, you know, you can look at the sets and I go, well, the set wasn't that um, over the top. The spectacle of it was, and what the spectacle was, was the people and how we presented them. That crowd of 51 plus thousand, 
you know, and, and everything that went into it. So, you know, the success of that team, the, the producers and the agents and the backstage staff and just all of the people that it takes to make this happen so things don't fall between the cracks, so things can move forward and you can put these events on. Um, it's pressure on all of us, but you can see people just grab it and revel in it. Even just the crew that is absolutely behind all those things. You know, we were in Laredo last night and everybody packed up that building in Laredo and drove it here and set it up here. And they were setting up, you know, 4 a.m. this morning. They were in here, put stuff up, <clears throat> plugging the trucks in and getting everything ready to go because we were here this morning running through stuff bright and early. And, you know, that level of dedication is what makes this a success. That the, the, all those people behind the scenes that you all come to these events and you see them running around <laughs> like ants on a hill, right? Doing all this stuff. That's really what makes all this stuff happen. Um, so th th that, that team is incredible. And um, while there is a lot of pressure, they make it, um, they make it all doable and enjoyable. Final question here in the second row. Uh, Scott Fishman for TV Insider. Um, so, you know, with WrestleMania heading into Hollywood, there's, you know, a lot of talk about The Rock and his potential involvement. What can you tell us on that? Has there been talk about him being involved this year? Was there talk about their, him being involved the prior? Apparently he can't get in shape in time. That's what all you tell me. Um, <laughs> uh, he, he was pretty jacked, I thought. I don't know, I see I saw Black Adam the other day. I didn't think it was the uniform. Um, he's incredibly busy. And um, I can say this as a, as a guy that sort of, we kind of grew up as two young kids fighting each other for the spot, right? And, and, and having battles over it and, and uh, in, in the best way, pushing each other. And we all were in that time. I, I know, f like for him, I was I was at a, a, a large like Emmy event a few years ago, and there was a poster there of him, and I think he was getting ready to drop the people's elbow on me or something, of course, and uh, he was standing over me in this photo, and I'm hyper, you know, uh, focused, right, like incredibly detailed picture. And as I'm looking at the picture, I realize he had goosebumps all over him, standing over me. You could see him clear as day in this photo. I took a picture of it and I sent it to him. I said, don't get this in Hollywood, do you? You know, it's a, it's a rush, but after the 12th time you've done that take, probably not as exciting as the first couple went. There, there's nothing like this, nothing. Um, you were all out there tonight, 51,000 people going crazy. Just put yourself in the center of that. It's all aimed at you. There's no rush like that in the world. Um, so I know for him, and I, and I know his family, his background and everything, like there's, there's a part of him that if he could be here for this, if he could be here for this WrestleMania um, in Hollywood, he would turn over every stone and walk through fire to be able to do it, if he could. I, I just don't think it's in the cards. But but then again, you don't know. WrestleMania 40 is next year. Well, yeah, and, and that's the thing. I think there's a, we, we always have conversations with him because he loves it so much and we'd love for him to be a part of it, right? He's the biggest star in Hollywood, maybe one of the, maybe the most recognizable person on the planet. Why wouldn't we want him to be a part of it, right? This is his home. Is an open invitation. We don't lock the door. He has an open invitation to walk through it anytime he wants. It, but he's incredibly busy. And um, I think that respect factor both ways that he wouldn't want to do it unless he could absolutely do it. Do you know what I mean? He's, there's no way he would show up here and half-ass it. There's no way he would show up here and not come in and want to put every single thing he had into it to make it the best it could possibly be. So unless he can do that, it really won't happen, but he knows that the door is open and when he has the time and the availability to do it, he can come in and electrify everybody.
Paul, thank you for spending some. Let's do one more. One more? All right. I don't want to be upstaged by Cody. Local wow. There's a competition going on here. Hey, can local yeah, one more question. Can local media ask a question? Well, yeah, you just did. That was a question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the big pop. I mean, uh, <laughs> okay, the final question goes to right here, second row. You, sir. Hello, Paul. Hey, man, how are you? Good. Um, by the way, I erroneously identified myself from the wrong publication before. I'm actually working for Inside the Ropes magazine. Thank you. Okay, now that that's clarified. Who did uh, you used to work for that you identified? I don't know. There was some uh, oh, yeah. publication that went away. Yeah. 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 But um, uh, what is the message? that you sent out tonight, not just to the fans, but to the wider universe that has taken a great deal of joy in scrutinizing the company? Um, I, I, the, the message is that we're gonna put on a spectacle and a show like nobody else can. Um, you know, you, you're always gonna get scrutinized, you're always gonna get looked at critically, you're always, you're always going to have that. Just do what you do. You do what you do. You put your head down. You work harder than everybody else. You put in more effort than anybody else. You put the best team that you can possibly put together. And you come out and you just do what you do. And nobody does it. And it, you know, I will speak for us, but I'm, I'm in the thick of it, so you can take it for what how you want, nobody does it like we do, nobody. And I, I don't mean that in the sports entertainment industry. I mean that in large scale, live event, show promotion, stadium events, 51,000 people in it, right? WrestleMania, two days sold out, SoFi Stadium. We will put on a spectacle like only we can. And, I, and I, I don't see anybody else doing it. I don't see anybody else that can touch it. And that's not, that's not ego, that's not, that's just my opinion. But I will put our production people, I will put our staff, I will put our crew, I will put our talent, I will put them all up against, up against anybody on this planet. And my opinion is we come out ahead. We do spectacle like nobody else. And um, it's not a statement from me. There are hundreds of people that worked in this building tonight for WWE. There are hundreds of talent that work here. Every single one of them walked into this building today to make a statement in what they do. From the smallest job to the highest job, they came here to make a statement that we are the WWE, right? And, and we did. And we're gonna do it again in Montreal. We're gonna do it again at SoFi Stadium. It's what we do. I'll say it one more time, better than anybody else on the planet. Anybody. Thank you all for, for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you. That doesn't have to be a